In my opinion, podcasting is one of the easiest and probably one of the most fun ways to get ideas and thoughts out to an audience. So if you're someone that's been thinking about making a podcast, but perhaps you've been discouraged by the process, this video is for you. I'm gonna show you a really easy and affordable way to get your podcast up and running in as little as a couple hours. And we're gonna do it all on an iPad. Now, before we start, even though I'm focusing on the iPad, and in my case, the iPad Pro, pretty much everything I'm about to show you applies to laptops and desktop computers as well. And if you're on iOS, this will definitely work with your iPhone. So there's basically two main practical things you need to start a podcast, and that's a microphone and a recorder. In my case, the recorder is the iPad Pro, and my microphone is the Rode NT-USB Mini. This is a microphone that Rode sent me to check out, and at first, I had plans just to use it as my new desktop recording mic. I didn't really need it, but I was just hyped on how small and portable it was. And this is what led me to realize I could totally just plug this mic into the iPad Pro. This not only makes this setup one of the most portable solo podcasting and distribution setups on the market, it also makes it incredibly easy. Because the NT-USB Mini is a USB microphone, iPad OS immediately recognizes it as an audio interface. When it comes to sound quality, the NT-USB Mini is fantastic. I'm recording this voiceover on it right now. It has a nice flat sound out of the box and you can easily EQ it to match your vocal style. It comes with a pretty cool magnetic stand, but I'd recommend tossing it on a microphone arm so you can get it nice and close to your mouth for a richer sound experience. I can't believe this mic is only 99 bucks. It's an instant buy for me if you don't already have a solid microphone. I've tested a few apps now for recording, and honestly, my favorite is just GarageBand. It's free, intuitive, and because it's an Apple app, it's well baked into the ecosystem of iPad OS. Plus, if you feel like experimenting, you can even use the built in loops and sound effects to build your episode entirely in GarageBand. Trust me, the new loops and all of the sound effects are fantastic. And to demonstrate, let's make a quick fake podcast right now. Okay, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make a podcast using your iPad and GarageBand. So we're gonna open up GarageBand and we're gonna start a new project and we're gonna use audio recorder and we're gonna select voice. Now, one of the first things you wanna do is click this little guy up here. It's gonna bring you to the track view. And when you're in track view, you're gonna hit this little plus button because what we need to do is turn off song sections because if you have song sections on, it's just gonna loop all your recordings back and forth and you're gonna get really, really annoyed. So just click on the first section and turn this to automatic. And that means as long as you're recording, the more sections will be added and you won't have to worry about it. The other thing I wanna do is turn off the metronome because that's just annoying while you're playing. And now we're just gonna dive right into the audio recorder. Okay, once we're in here, you'll see that it says lead vocals. Now what'll happen is if I record with this setting on, it's gonna sound kind of funky and I'll give you an example. So it'll count down. Hello and welcome to this fake podcast demo. So if we hear this back now. Hello and welcome to this fake podcast demo. It's very echoey and it sounds kind of stupid. So if you click on this though, or tap on it, whatever you're using, if you're not using a mice, a mouse, uh, we're gonna hit vocals and then scroll down to narrator. And now right away when you listen to this, hello and welcome to this fake podcast demo. It's just adding a little bit of compression and you can play with this to make it sound more compressed or less. Compression is gonna give you that kind of Howard Stern radio voice kind of sound. I will say that narrator is just the best out of the box experience if you just wanna add a little bit of compression just to give you a little bit of that radio vibe. But otherwise, all the audio stuff is built right into here and you can play with EQ and have some fun. So let's just record an intro to a podcast right now. So I'll undo that recording. Uh, I'll put this back on to narrator. Put the compressor about halfway and we'll record a little intro. Hello and welcome back to this fake podcast demo. This is Patrick Tomaso, your host of the fake podcast. Today we don't have a guest, we don't have a sponsor, we have absolutely nothing on the show because it's a fake podcast. Here we go. So now that our recording is done, we can go back to this multi-track view and we will see that we have all of our audio here. And if I wanted to trim stuff or edit stuff, I can just quickly drag things here and there uh, and I'll play this back real quick. Hello and welcome back to this fake podcast demo. This is Patrick Tomaso, your host of the fake podcast. Today we don't have a guest, we don't have a sponsor, we have absolutely nothing on the show because it's a fake podcast. Here we go. So what I could do now is I could keep recording. So if I just hit record here, I could start recording more of my audio. But what I want to do now is I could actually just add some theme music. So I'll hit the loops here uh, and I'll just pick something. It doesn't really matter what it is, but we'll just play a track here. This sounds kind of fun, so we'll just drag this probably around here. We'll start playing. You can hear it kind of kick in right here. We have absolutely nothing on the show because it's a fake podcast. Here we go. 
If I wanted to, I could add a drum beat to this too. So I could just pick something here. Cool, so I'll just drag this over. And we'll have it start at the same time. And so what will happen now is we have a little kind of goofy intro track. We have absolutely nothing on this show because it's a fake podcast. Here we go. So now we have a little stupid theme song just using loops and GarageBand. And what I'll do now is I'll just record some fake stuff that would happen in the episode afterwards. So I'll click this track again and we'll just record. So once again, welcome back to the fake podcast where we don't have any guests or anybody or anything to talk about. This is the show. I don't know why you subscribed. I don't know why you're listening to this, but uh, I hope you enjoy this fake podcast. So we'll stop the recording again. If we go back to our multi-track view, you will see we now have an intro, a theme song, and we have an outro, or sorry, a body, a body of the episode. So you'll hear this kick in now too. So once again, welcome back to the fake podcast where we don't have any guests or anybody or anything to talk about. This is the show. I don't know why you subscribed. I don't know why you're listening to this, but uh, I hope you enjoy this fake podcast. That's pretty much as easy as it is to make a podcast using just GarageBand. And obviously you can see this is a super, super basic podcast, but at the core of it is that you can record audio, you can edit it, you can trim it, you can do whatever you got to do to it. You can move it around. You can EQ it more if you want to afterwards. You can play with the tone and whatnot. So then once you're done, your podcast podcast, whatever it is, you're going to see here that you have it in your library of uh, projects within GarageBand. So we'll just right click this or you can tap and hold on it if you're not using a mouse. And then we will share it as a song. And then I just use high quality. You can play with whatever you want. You can output a wave if you want to. Um, I would just avoid like medium quality and low quality or even the iTunes stuff for lossless. I think it's just a little bit overkill. So high quality is fine for me, 192 kilobits per second. And we'll just share. And then you'll see it goes up with everything that you would normally see in a share sheet on iOS. Um, but you're going to click open in. This is a little bit weird. This is just something with iPad that kind of annoys me because the file system is just bizarre within this thing. But you're going to hit open in. And then this is going to let you save it to files, which is where you want this file to be if you want to upload it later. So it's going to export the song. Depending on the complexity of your project or how slow your iPad is, uh, this will be different. So now you'll see that we can add this to files. So I'll save this to files. And then I usually put it on my iPad. I don't really have much folder set up for stuff like this, but I will keep it, keep it here uh, in GarageBand for iOS because I'll just remember where that is. So I'll just save this here. And now it's in files. So now if we're in files, you'll see in the GarageBand for iOS that we have that my song there, which is what it's called. So we'll just rename that now to fake podcast. And that's our file. So this is something we could upload, we can share around, we can send it to other apps if we wanted to, but we have now just created a fake podcast. So if I hit this, I can just play it quick. Hello, and welcome back to this fake podcast demo. This is Patrick Tomaso, your host of the fake podcast. Today, we don't have a guest. We don't have a sponsor. We have absolutely nothing on the show because it's a fake podcast. Here we go. And you get the idea. That's our fake podcast done entirely on an iPad Pro and saved to the files app for you to upload and share however you wish. So now that you have an episode, you might be wondering, how do you get your show up on Apple Podcasts or Spotify? So I did some research and I've come to the conclusion that the two best ways to get your show out are Simplecast and Anchor. I personally use Anchor mostly because it's free, but it has some cool built-in features, especially for mobile podcasters. You can record remote interviews if you want to have guests, and you can even build your episode entirely in the app using their editor. But some might find it a bit too basic, and I know others have issues with Anchor's licensing policy. That's where Simplecast comes in. It's a paid platform, and for some it's a bit more robust. Simplecast isn't an app, but it works just fine in Safari, although it's a bit quirky. This isn't Simplecast's fault, but I noticed that file uploading is a bit strange. You can't use a built-in browse feature to upload. You have to tile your files app with Safari to drag and drop your file into Simplecast. It's a bit strange and annoying, but hopefully it's something they fix soon. Look, at the end of the day, all this stuff is fun and cool, but really my best advice for starting a podcast is to not overthink it. Come up with an idea or a format, but just remember that your point of view and your personality is what matters most. So really, the best way to start a podcast is to just start. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, hit subscribe. If you want to hear my podcast, the link is in the description of this video. If you have any questions, you will find me in the comments and you'll hear me next time I feel like making a video. Cheers.